You know, if you were to tell me when I was a kid that one day I would be obsessed with a character based around polka dots, I'd probably start heavily rethinking my hobbies. I'd probably start focusing on sports or get serious about music or stamp collecting. I don't know, I was a weird kid. But damn it, James Gunn, you did it. You turned one of the arguably most laughed at characters into an awesome character that frankly has earned a spot in my heart. Polka Dot Man is a pretty cool character in my opinion, but within the world of comics, he is essentially a joke. And that's fine. Sometimes all it takes is one writer to give a character a chance and bam, awesome forever. Kite Man is another prime example of this. Today's video is going to cover the vast majority of the comic book history of Abner Krill, aka Mr. Polka Dot, otherwise known as Polka Dot Man. Polka Dot Man's first appearance was in 1963's Detective Comics issue 300 by Bill Finger and Sheldon Moldoff. During his first appearance, Polka Dot Man is part of a three-man crew that is attempting to rob a cleaning plant. When he's first introduced, Polka Dot Man actually goes by Mr. Polka Dot. Batman and Robin fight Mr. Polka Dot, with Polka Dot Man throwing various weapons made out of his dots at them. One turns into a buzzsaw, one turns into a giant glowing beam of light, and another even turns into a disc that he can ride on. Polka Dot Man is able to escape, and Batman and Robin learn that the source of his power is his suit and belt. Whenever he rips a dot off of his costume, it goes from a neutral state to being electrically charged, and it completes the task it was created for, afterwards disintegrating. Mr. Polka Dot starts an elaborate series of crimes based around stealing things from places that have dots associated with them. Batman and Robin seem to be one step behind him at all times. Robin almost catches him robbing an ice skating rink, but Polka Dot Man throws a dot at him that turns into like 20 fists that swiftly kick the shit out of Robin, and it's hilarious. Then Robin has the bright idea to track Mr. Polka Dot down using a leopard. Well, Robin gets immediately knocked out and imprisoned. Mr. Polka Dot forces Robin to write a letter to Batman, baiting him into a final showdown. Robin writes the note, but secretly includes a coded braille message into the note that Batman receives. Batman is able to use it to track down and free Robin. The two then track down Polka Dot Man, defeat him, and send him to jail. Mr. Polka Dot is not seen again in comics for literally 33 years. The next time Mr. Polka Dot surfaces in the main DC continuity is in GCPD number 1 in 1996. Resurfacing, Mr. Polka Dot has now changed his name to the significantly cooler Polka Dot Man, and is shown beating the crap out of a GCPD police sergeant during a jewel robbery gone wrong. However, the assault from Polka Dot Man doesn't last very long as he's unable to use his powers and Harvey Bullock ends up kicking the crap out of him. Polka Dot Man ends up filing a complaint against the GCPD. And then he kind of fades into obscurity again, slowly showing up briefly here and there, but never in any significant capacity. Polka Dot Man only seems to really appear in bars or nightclubs where other F-rate villains hang out. Actually, as a good point, here he is shown getting thrown through the window of a bar called the Alibi by Nightwing during Batgirl's Year One arc. Polka Dot Man is just trying to get himself a drink and remember the good times when he almost beat the Cape Crusader in the Boy Wonder. However, later following the events of Final Crisis, Polka Dot Man eventually reverts back to going by the infinitely lamer name of Mr. Polka Dot. Mr. Polka Dot aligns himself with a character named General Amortis, who is assembling a crew of other crap-tier villains that he calls the Army of the Endangered. Working alongside Dr. Achilles Milo, General Amortis goes about upgrading the powers and gadgets of these washouts. Mr. Polka Dot is one of those villains, however it's unclear how he's enhanced. However, in a battle with one of his teammates who defects the human flame, Polka Dot Man is killed when a manhole cover crushes his head, and this actually ends the main comic book continuity of Polka Dot Man, and also it depressed me when I read it. And that is about it for his main continuity history, and you'll notice that he was never actually in the Suicide Squad in DC Comics or in the New 52 or Rebirth, but... Polka Dot Man is shown in the Elseworlds story of Injustice 2, based off of the hit video game of the same name. 
Anywho, Polka Dot Man is part of this universe's Suicide Squad, assembled by Amanda Waller. However, Jason Todd, disguised as Batman, breaks in, kicks the shit out of everybody in charge, and takes control of the Suicide Squad. Todd then goes on to terminate everybody in the team that he determines to be either too difficult to control, reckless, or downright useless. And unfortunately for Polka Dot Man, he's part of that crew. His head gets blown up via a bomb implanted in his neck, and really, he just can't catch a break no matter what universe he's in. And that kind of brings me to my last point here. Someone, somewhere, is going to write a great Polka Dot Man story someday. They have to. It's time. In fact, you know what? Down below in the comments section, I want to get Save Polka Dot Man trending. Put this on social media, post it on Twitter, hashtag it with Save Polka Dot Man. I think he deserves it. And that is about it for me on Polka Dot Man. I hope you enjoyed all of the knowledge and aren't too depressed by his lack of coolness in comics. We will be fixing that shortly with our rally, presuming you guys do your part. This has been Nick with Key Issues. Thank you for watching, and remember the motto, Polka Dot Man over everything.